A great presentation has a number of different components, the most important of which is you've got to know exactly what you want to say. You need to have that central message absolutely as clear as possible. It needs to be so clear that you can get it onto a post-it note. And until you've got that, then you're not really in a position to start. Once you've got that, though, you can start to select your material and you can start to fill it out. And then you've got to think hard about what your audience is. Who is it you're speaking to? What do they think already? What are you trying to persuade them of? What are you trying to achieve with this presentation? You need to be very clear on that question too. And then you come to actually writing it, which is quite late in the process. Get rid of all the technical language that you use at work and try and think plainly in normal English. At that point, you'll start to have a really clear account of what you're trying to say. And then you've just got to get up there and with confidence deliver it. Because you want to start your presentation exactly setting up the correct presentation. Not any old thing. You don't want it to be loose at the beginning. You want it to be very focused. If the basic purpose of what you're doing is to give people information, then what you've said matters absolutely crucially. And even if your delivery is a bit flat, it doesn't much matter because people will look at it later. It might be in written form. And getting that information in their heads is the crucial thing. However, if your purpose is to persuade them of something or to inspire them to do something, then the way in which you say it is also absolutely vital. It's no good making an inspirational speech in a very flat, monotone way. You have to lift them a bit. Some very good presentations can be a bit empty when you look back on them, but at the time when you were listening, you felt they were really inspirational. So it depends on the purpose of what you're doing, whether it's the content or the style which matters the most. If you want to be memorable, try and speak in pictures. Try and give people a portrait of what you're saying. It's very difficult to remember a string of numbers or statistics, but if you can paint a picture or some sort of metaphor that will enable people to recreate your speech, that works really, really well. A second thing to do is to have a central phrase which encapsulates a whole speech, to be or not to be. That's not just a memorable little line, it's also the encapsulation of the whole play. That's what it's about. So a phrase like that, which becomes the title of the speech. The third thing you can do, if you can manage it, is to be funny. People always remember the jokes. And the crucial thing there is not just to be funny, but to be relevant and funny. Your jokes have therefore got to tell the right story. Often people who are very funny put in gags, but they've got nothing to contribute to the speech itself. Whereas the real skill is to tell a story through a joke, because then people remember not just the joke, but the point you were making. The classic series of speeches, and uh, most speechwriters would say this, is Winston Churchill's speeches in 1940 in the House of Commons. Because Britain was in great peril, and Churchill got up and he spoke, and he essentially lied. He essentially said, things are gonna be fine. Nobody in their right mind thought things were going to be fine at the time, but through the power of his words, he managed to conjure up the spirit to help make it fine. They're beautifully written speeches, too. If you go back and read them, they read well, too. Lots of speeches don't read well. That brings me to the second person who I think is a fantastic speaker, Barack Obama. His speeches don't read particularly well. If you try and read them out yourself, they're fairly flat. They don't work. But when Obama reads them, he really sings, and they come alive. And that's because he's got great lilting delivery. He's got a fantastic voice. He's also got a great background in the sense that Obama became a great speaker because he was a black man running for president of the United States of America. That's a crucial background fact that the rest of us don't have when we read his speeches out, so they don't work in the same way. I think he's the best of the current crop. In British politics, William Hague is a very good speaker. He's extremely funny, very adept. What he doesn't have is a subject. He's never had a big subject, to, so he's therefore he's never made a memorable speech. He's also never made a bad one because every time he speaks, it's very clear and he's very funny. But the crucial thing is you've got to have a big subject. That's what makes a big speaker, rather than just being good at speeches.